And welcome to another Physiology for Engineers lecture with Professor Gonzalez Fernandez at Lehigh University. Today we are going to look at the vascular system. Uh, the vascular system is the system uh, with all the vessels that are going to take uh, the blood, the oxygenated blood uh, to our tissues uh, with also the nutrients. Uh, then in our tissues we have the uh, exchange of different uh, byproducts and also gases and nutrients. And finally, it's going to collect uh, the, um, uh, all the degradation, uh, all the degradation solutes uh, from the tissues and also the uh, CO2. And it's going to move it back uh, to the heart so the heart can send it again back to the lungs for uh, oxygenation. So here in the vascular system, uh, we have um, uh, different uh, blood vessels, uh, right? So the first uh, here we have the arterial end. Uh, so in the arterial end, we have uh, different vessels. So we have the large arteries. So these are the big arteries, like for example, the aorta. And then we also have smaller arteries that are the arterioles. Okay, so in this one, in, in the arteries, uh, the blood is going to arrive uh, from, the, uh, from the heart, and it's going to flow into the arteries, and then also flow into the arterioles, and then go here for a gas exchange into the capillaries. So this is uh, the large arteries, or the arterial branch is distinguished because, uh, first of all, the blood here is oxygenated, uh, so it's uh, 95 to 100% saturated in oxygen. Also, the pressure is much higher. So the pressure is around 100 over 80 millimeters of, merc of mercury here in the arteries. And finally, there are no valves that regulate the movement of blood. So then uh, we also have the um, uh, venous branch. So in the venous branch, uh, we have the different vessels are going to carry the uh, deoxygenated blood uh, back to uh, back to the heart and then to the lungs. So here we have uh, the large veins. So for example, the vena cava. And then we have smaller veins that are the venules. Okay. And then very important, connecting uh, the arteries and the veins, uh, we have here the capillaries. Uh, over here. And uh, in the capillaries, we are going to have the gas exchange and the nutrient exchange between the blood and, and the tissues. So uh, it is uh, the same uh, that in these uh, in the arter arteries we have like a specific uh, characteristics. Also in the venous end we have uh, different characteristics. So uh, what is going to happen is that the blood the blood that the, is uh, the oxygenated or the saturation of oxygen is uh, is low uh, because the blood is never going to be totally deoxygenated. So the oxygen saturation here is around uh, seventy to eighty percent. So this the oxygenated blood is going to come to come back flowing to here and uh, to keep this uh, uh, fluid, uh, blood flow back to uh, to uh, get oxygenated again. Uh, this is uh, something very characteristic of the veins that they have different valves. So these valves are important because these valves are going to push the blood uh, towards uh, back towards the um, uh, the uh, lungs or or the heart. Uh, but uh, here also they not only push the blood; they also close. And through this closing, they are going to avoid for the blood to flow back into the veins. So this is very important. Okay. Uh, also, uh, the pressure here in the in the veins uh, is much lower than in the arteries. So in the arteries, it's around um, 120 over 80. Here is going to be around two to six millimeters of mercury, uh, which is relatively low. 
Cool. So once uh, we know a bit more about like the division of the different uh, arteries and veins and the capillaries, we are going to go a bit more insight into the details of every vessel. So first of all, we have the large arteries. So the large arteries are character uh, characterized because they have this small uh, inside of the vessel, which is called the lumen. Uh, and also, they are going to be pretty thick. So they are going to have uh, around the lumen uh, the endothelium, which is a layer of uh, the endothelial cells. And then around that endothelium, we are going to have um, a lot of elastic layers. And also, we are going to have a, a, a smooth muscle layers. Okay. So uh, these elastic layers are necessary because the pressure here is much higher than in the veins. In the veins, we are uh, so the large veins, they are not going to have all these elastic layers. Uh, but in the arteries, it's necessary because of this high uh, pressure of 120 over 80. Uh, and uh, also, we need the smooth muscle because, as I said previously, here in the arteries, we are not going to have valves. So it's really important to keep the blood flowing to have uh, these, um, uh, these smooth uh, muscle layers that are going to uh, regulate the pressure on the, on the blood flow. Okay. Uh, so then we go to the arterioles. Uh, so the arterioles, they have uh, this lumen here, so it's kind of like similar size, uh, and they have a really thin endothelium, so they have a really thin layer of endothelial cells. But is, what is very important about the arterioles is that it has this layer of smooth cells that are very powerful. And very importantly about these smooth cells, they are innervated by the autonomous system. So this means that uh, these uh, nerves uh, from the autonomous, uh, uh, autonomous system that are innervating these smooth cells, they are going to be able to dilect and contract uh, the arterioles to reduce or allow the uh, blood flow into the tissues for the gas and for the gas exchange. Okay, then we go to uh, the veins. Uh, so in the larger veins, they are very similar to the um, uh, arteries and also the arterioles. Uh, the main component or the main reason is because they have a really big lumen. Okay, so they have a really big uh, inside of the vessel, a big lumen. And uh, around this lumen, we are uh, going to have a uh, thing endothelium, and then on, around the endothelium, uh, we are going to have uh, very little connective tissue, a uh, very little, uh, uh, we, we don't have uh, that uh, layers of, uh, of the elastic uh, layers uh, here. Um, and this is because the pressure, as I said, here in the veins is very low, so we don't need uh, that elastic structure. It's around uh, two to six millimeters of mercury. And also we don't need the, uh, the smooth muscle cells uh, because here we have the valves that are going to uh, regulate the blood flow. So then uh, finally uh, we go uh, to the venules here. Uh, so the venules are very similar to the large veins. So they have uh, like this lumen, which is pretty similar to the lumen of the arterioles. And then they are going to have a very uh, thin endothelium, uh, but they are going to have uh, some connective tissue around them as well, okay? And then finally, uh, here uh, we have uh, these very important vessels that are called the capillaries that are going to be the ones that are going to be key uh, for the gas and nutrient exchange uh, between the blood and over tissues. So uh, here in the capillaries, uh, here we have the lumen and the composition of the capillary is just the lumen surrounded by a really thin layer of endothelial cells or a very thin endothelium to allow that easy uh, gas etching and nutrient exchange between the blood and the tissues. So uh, something that I forgot to comment between uh, the arteries and the veins, if uh, you ever want to check uh, or differentiate in your body if this is a vein or an artery, you just uh, go for your pulse. And if there is pulse, uh, there is an artery because uh, we are going to feel that contraction of the ventricle. And if there is no pulse, it's a vein. 
So in order to understand a bit better on how the regulation of the different uh, blood flow happened thanks to the um, uh, different uh, blood vessels and look at it from a more engineering perspective, uh, we can look at it in as uh, the blood flows. So first, we need uh, conducting or conduction of the of the of the uh, um, of the blood. So this is done by the large arteries. Okay. So the arteries are these high conductance, uh, low resistance uh, vessels that are going to receive the blood and take it to uh, the different tissues. Then we have the arterioles. And the arterioles are going to create resistance. Okay, so due to these uh, small muscle uh, cells, they are going to create resistance and they are going to regulate the blood flow uh, to the different tissues. Then we finally have the capillaries. Okay, uh, so the capillaries are s change vessels. So these exchange vessels they are going to allow the uh, exchange of gases and nutrients between the blood and the tissue. And finally, we have the veins and the venules that are uh, the, the capacitance vessels. And low resistance. So these capacitance vessels, uh, they are called capacitance vessels because they have more, most of the blood in our system is actually in the veins and venules. Okay, so now we are going to move on and look a bit more in detail into the regulation of the, of the pressure at the different, uh, at the different uh, arteries, arterioles, veins and venules. Uh, and we are also going to uh, dive a bit deeper into the process of uh, gas and nutrient exchange at the capillary.